It is time to talk to our buddy Roger Weiland. Of course, Big Board Sports right here, uh, 10 to noon every weekday. And, of course, uh, News Channel 13 as well, uh, breaking all kinds of sports stories. The the big one, Kevin Herter going yeah. pro. I didn't have that one. That caught me by surprise. You know, there have been some speculation that if he would go in the draft that he would, you know, be a high draft pick this year. But I, I thought he was just going to stay and go one more year. And I think he will. I think this is nothing more than test the okay. waters. Uh, and here's why. Uh, his father, who we know, yep. Tommy, said we reached out to him on Friday when it broke. Hey, can we talk to Kevin? Where is he? And the father said, you know what? He's not doing any interviews because this is very low key. I think the plan is not hiring an agent. So there'll be no agent hired. Go to some of the combines. See how he does. See what we hear. And most likely go back to Maryland for one more year, and then next year, after his junior year, then we hire the agent, then we go. But I don't think it's going to happen this year. I have a theory. I have a tinfoil hat theory for you. Ready? He was the report allegedly he was trying to get Cremo to come there. Yeah, yeah. So he goes to Maryland. Look, I'm gonna go pro if you don't bring my boy Cremo in. Mm-hmm. And then and then you get Cremo in Maryland. Love that. Right. Love that. How great scenario. would be to see those guys? Yeah. I mean, sure. It's it's very crazy on my part. But it would be fun. That'd be fun. I mean, for Herder, it has to be like a lottery, and then you're gonna make your money. And and I don't know that he's that yet. Um, he's a second round guy, right? That, I mean, they, they have him projected first. They do. They have him projected first on on many of the mock drafts. NBA, they've got Herder in the top twenty. Now, high, high, how high in the top twenty? That's what they need to find out. And that's why no agent, so you can still go back. He has until May thirtieth. To figure this out. May 30th comes, he's got to make a decision. Get an agent and go, or get no agent and tell tell Maryland, I'm coming back for one more year. And I think that's what, I would say, 80-20, 90-10, he's back at Maryland for one more year. My hope is that just Maryland as a team is better next season, because it's a win-win. You go and get tested out. It's almost like you're going to school, taking a test that it doesn't count for your grades, and you find out where you stand. If he comes back, and I agree with you, Roger, that he plays next season and his team makes the NCAA tournament, and who knows? Maybe he has a great game in the round of 64. Yeah. It can only help him right, yeah. for that next stage of his career. And I don't know what your boy Battle's doing either. He's, he did something very similar on Friday Ties Battle of Syracuse. He is also a sophomore is testing the waters, and the report I'm hearing is that he'll do. He did not hire an agent. That's key. You hire agents right, over, right? But with no agent, he's testing the waters. He likely will end up back with the orange for one more year. That's a smart play. That's yeah. a, it's just it's a really see, smart yeah. play. Why not if, go and see what it's all about? And go to the combines and you know experience it. And then next year he'll know exactly what he's getting himself into, and you get an agent and go from there. But I I think this is more of a test the waters for Kevin than really being that serious about entering the NBA draft. It's funny, here in the Capitals, you got Roger Weinland with us. We've got one guy testing the waters for the NBA, the other guy uh, as a grad student yeah. who's testing the waters for every major college there is. <laughs> no doubt. So the latest on, on Joe Cremo, who left UA, was Friday he sent me a text and said, Got a call, personal call from Jay Wright at Villanova. So he's going to the Knicks? No. Oh. <laughs> right, right, right. We'll see him at the Garden. <laughs> and and I guess the Kansas Kansas assistant coach reached out. He was at Texas this weekend. I just sent him a text saying how was Texas. I didn't get a response back yet. But uh, and he's going. To, he's got to visit Gonzaga yet. And then I mean, then pro- it probably won't make a decision this week. It's probably going to linger into. Perhaps next week. Who we were Gonzaga called him while he was here. He yeah. came in the show, so we we were hanging out with him. And he's like, I need to take this. Yeah, it's good Gonzaga, he, right? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I wish Gonzaga would I call me s- randomly. Like, what? <laughs> Cremo is having so much fun with this man. It's unbelievable good for him. I mean, he he never has experienced this, right? Because again, when he came out of high school, it was he didn't even step foot on the U Albany campus and said yes to Will Brown, right? Right. So he was never recruited by anybody. It was his junior year. He said, I'm going to U Albany. Never was on the campus before he said that. <laughs> and now I think he was kicking himself after his junior season, going, you know what? I just graduated. I did a great job there with my education. I got one year left. Right. I want to go experience this. I think I can play at the next level. And obviously, he's got a lot of good schools that think he can play at the next level. That time frame, it's not a week, it's Two weeks, a month, like what is it? I mean, he's enjoying himself. Why rush yeah. it, right? He he told me I'm I'm taking all my visits. Good, 
And, 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 and I'm not going to rush a decision. I'm sure he'll give uh, our boy Zach by a call before he does anything. Zach kind of like, you know. The confidant yeah, is the yeah, newspaper yeah, calls. Yeah, he gives yeah. Zach a call and say, where are we at? What do you think? What do you think? I, talking to Zach, who obviously was with us and is right. now out in Denver, uh, he gets calls from like – these coaches. Then they, they call they, Zach. They, they, they call out. Zach to see, you wow. know, to pick his brain. Hey, what do you think, Joe? He's be loving this. Joe be a good. He's trying. They're trying to schmooze Zach to get to to get to Joe a little bit. <laughs> that's gonna, that's gonna be tough though, because like he's on the air in Denver. Yeah. Denver doesn't unless unless Cream ends up going to like Colorado or they something. They don't care. Yeah. So he's got this like great inside scoop, and he's like, and he's gonna talk about not being able to bench press two twenty five again. <laughs> such a great problem for Cremo to have right now. Just enjoy and and whatever decision he makes. It's going to be a good one. He's going to go to a school where a he's going to play. I mean, that's a prerequisite right, for Joe, right. and he's going to get to the. He'll have a legitimate shot to get to the NCAA tournament. Roger Weiland with us, of course, on 104.5 The Team. And Thursday night, we're going to be over at Katie O'Burns doing our, our big draft party, the war room. That's so cool. How soon uh, does your boy Saquon Barkley come off the board? I think he's going two to the Giants. I'm going to be really disappointed if he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> going to break my heart if he doesn't go to the Giants. I told Honorado if, if he goes to Giants, I'm just going to get like, you know, a uh, hotel room and just hang out in New Jersey all training camp. Go watch. <laughs> just, just live there. Yeah. Just live there. Yeah, take some time off, an extended period off. You want me? I'll be in East Rather for watching Saquon work out. I heard it's going to get as high as this. Roger Weiland history may be made. You said Jersey. earlier the Jersey, right? Yeah. So, so for those that may not know, you've never worn a Jersey in your entire life of another athlete. I've never worn blue jeans. Really? What? No. Not no. even as a kid? No. How I've never. Wa- the only time I wore a pair of blue jeans is to cut down a Christmas tree 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so blue jeans and a Penn State jersey. Oh, I, a, I didn't say blue jeans. Oh, come on. Go <laughs> on. Come on. Let's pigeon, make history. Don't pigeonhole me into that. <laughs> uh, no, I've, I've never. No, that's true story about the blue jeans. And it's true story about a jersey. I've never wore, like, you know, I grew up Penn Stater, right. Steelers, Pirates. Right. And I never wore any of their jerseys. I don't know why. And now I, I, I never won a jersey. So I said, if they draft him number two, I'm going to show up here because you can, you know, you don't have to wear a suit and tie and do radio. No. Uh, I'm, in I can, right I'm, now. I'm in shorts and a t shirt right now. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> uh, I will go out and purchase a Barkley jersey uh, and wear it into the studio. I love that. I love that. Roger Weiland with us. So um, I have him in my mock draft going number one overall to Cleveland. See, if that happens, then and he and he thinks, by the way, he should go number one. Right. Well, there's a lot of there's a well. Not Barkley's a lot. like I I I should be the overall number one pick. It's good mentality to have, I guess. Well, but especially is Cleveland going to pass on a quarterback. Well, that's what I think. I'm wondering if the Giants are doing a smokescreen. You you tell you tell Cleveland we're going to take uh, Barkley or Chubb or whoever it is you think you're getting it for. We're taking him. So that they forces their hand to take him at one, and then the Giants have Sam Darnold at two. That could I mean, that's why I think he's going to the Giants too. But you never know, and you know on draft night what happens if if Cleveland does not take Sam Darnold, it, and then are the Giants love Sam Darnold, right? So then is that you know, and are there going to be any major trades? And yes, anything is possible. But right now, I would say. From what I'm hearing, the Giants are really serious about taking Barkley, too. Love it. Uh, Roger, so, of course. And uh, I want to wear a Barkley jersey. I, I want to see you <laughs> in a jersey. Barkley. Now that I know it's never happened. Yeah. I, and I think then, so we we have to do like a double or nothing bet, because I still owe you a sandwich board walking around oh, uh, yeah. promoting you. Right. I owe I you totally that. I totally forgot about that. I haven't. I'm just trying to get <laughs> I, I pay my bets. It just takes six years. Um, well, I got to believe that I'll be able to find a Barkley jersey, right, in the Capital oh, yeah. region, right? Please. It's Giants country here. It'll be like two so seconds. So somewhere they're going to be, boom, Barkley's got a Actually, jersey. with your contacts with the Giants, they should send you one. Yeah, I doubt they'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> they're, um, they're not quite that good. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, no, I mean, I mean that we got to do that. I think if we bet again, I'm going to make you wear blue jeans if you yeah, lose. That I think that's going to be the... That, I don't, even, I don't <laughs> own a pair, never had a pair. <laughs> I wear khakis, though. Yeah. Or khakis. Khakis are, khakis are fine. Yeah, I do khakis. My, yeah. my wife, you, you dress like an 80-year-old man. <laughs> you, she goes, Kelly goes, you, know, you, you just dress like your dad. My dad's uh-huh. going to be 80 in June. Yeah, well, hey, he she wears, chose he wears you. Khaki. The only thing you do is wear khakis and a golf shirt. That's the only uh-huh. thing you do, khakis and a golf shirt. She chose you. She did. She, she knew, stuck with me. She knew it was, there was no blue jeans in that oh, closet. Was, she yes. knew. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, uh, of course, uh, News Channel 13. Um you might be wearing new clothes. News Channel 13's all dressed up now. Oh, brand new set debuts today. 
Well, now the excitement level is through the roof at the Mighty One Three. <laughs> it's been over twenty years since they changed sets. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So this will be my third set since I got here. They changed uh, back in '86, and then and then they haven't changed, haven't changed since. Then. Then. So now, shortly after I got here, they changed. But it's been over twenty years since we've had a new look at the Mighty One Three, and today's the new. We're like, we're like, it's like. You know, Christmas right at News Channel 13. Everyone's like, oh, can't wait to get this set. And we've been teasing it on the air for a while. And we've been in this B studio, this real small little studio, for over a month while this thing has been constructed. Well, it's now ready. Lights, camera, action, go. We're going to have a new look starting at 4 o'clock today. Have you seen it yet? Yeah. Yeah, it looks great. It looks great. Really now, how will it look with the, you know, the graphics are all new. There's new graphic look. There's new opens. Like right. I'll actually look like me now. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I'll now have gray hair. Like the other one that they t- the shot a hundred years ago looks like. Oh boy, he's he's got black hair. No, 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 I really don't. <laughs> the one, the one, the same one I have at the TU Center. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that was that was the worst. <laughs> that, 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 that's from the late eighties. You don't even know who that is. No, no. I mean, if somebody looked at it, they go, "There's no way that's Roger Wyland." No, no, it's it, it's, it, it's ridiculous. It is. It so is. they might, you know, Bob Belber might want to take a new picture of me <laughs> to put up there, or just leave it alone because I look a lot better than I right, do now. I would just, so I would just fine. leave it. If I was you, I'd leave it. Just I, don't leave it. I, I usually don't. Well, I just did say a word, but I usually don't say a word. Right. Like I see it and go, "Boy, that's still up there." Yeah. It's and there's yeah, it's but you there. guys will have to turn on the TV and see the, yes. new, the new the new the digs. I'm in uh, yeah, I'm curious. I got to like see all that. the newsroom people will be huddled around watching. Yeah, everybody imagine? today. I got to go in like at two o'clock to get to go to the studio and they can they can figure out what angle they want to shoot me and oh, how man. the lighting is going to be. This is a big deal. This is. Can you imagine being the first producer to screw up a new graphic or something? Oh, you don't want to do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> like him to give me more time. Now that we're <laughs> now that we're on the topic, uh, all right, that uh, probably uh, isn't going to happen. On that note, this is time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Roger, we look forward to seeing you tonight right, on the new set, and uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you in a Barkley jersey, man. I'd like to see you guys. Get I your think guy. it's going to happen. End of the week. All right, Roger. Thanks for coming in. You got it, man.